Hi folks, today's video is about a free open source and very cross-platform app called Local Send, and it is available on Android, also standalone APK file you see there with FDroid. It's available on iOS, so you can put it onto iPads or iPhones, Windows, as well as Linux. And I'll, I'll show a little bit more detail about how you get to these download links just now. But just suffice to say, it's not actually just files. It can also transfer even or backup APK app files from your from your Android phone specifically. Obviously not. I don't think that's on iOS. I have tested this on iPad, but I'm going to show today how it works on Android. And it'll also copy text back and forth. So if you think of apps like Push Bullet and similar, they're getting more and more restricted and limiting in terms of what you can do, you know, especially on the free accounts. So what also sets this aside, apart from it being free, is security. It uses SSL certificates, which it generates on the fly, but it works on your local network only. So it does not go externally out to any cloud services that it doesn't require or use any cloud services. All you've got to do is start up the apps on the two sides and send or receive whatever you want to send. So if you are external, you could use maybe something like OpenVPN or something to drop into your local LAN, and that'll be a way of, of also using this. Or, for example, maybe even if you're connecting via the same mobile hotspot, for example, it works basically on your local network. So that's it in a nutshell, really. This is what its sort of main website looks like. I'll put the links below, obviously, the video as well. But if you click down at the bottom here for where it shows offline installers. You see here it goes into a little bit more detail about the installations and these are obviously quick links. You'll see including also on Windows side a portable EXE file. So that's also pretty nice. You don't even have to install it. You could run this off or have it on a USB stick even and use it in that manner. And obviously I didn't mention just now about Mac OS as well. So let's have a look at the GitHub page actually. Let's go to code. So you'll see the source code, of course, also quite important. Updates yesterday, last week, last month, last month, last week, so three days ago. So it's regularly updated, which is always good news for anything that you want to make use of. And here's a more detailed breakdown of all the different manners of installation. So there's all your options on Windows, including that portable file. Mac, on Linux side, I'm actually running it as a flat hub or flat pack install at the moment. That's often your most reliable way of running it. But if you are on Arch, then AUR as well. And App Image will run on Ubuntu and most other Linux distros as well. For Android, Obviously, yes, Play Store, but also FDroid and standalone APK. And yeah, including even Amazon for the Fire OS. They give a little bit more detail here, which you can sort of read how, how it works. And there's some manual installs as well, you know, if you need to. But I think let's get on with looking at the app. I'm going to sort of show you, first of all, how it works. And then I'll go through some of the menu options as well. So it's running here on the... Linux side on the left hand side and you'll see it's got a name this is quite important because it identifies uniquely for each device that's connected it's got a sort of a cryptic phrase or two word phrase if you want to call it that which helps you just identify and ensure that you are connecting to the correct machines so let's just start up the Android side on the right hand side I've actually got my Android phone and I'm just going to start the app up. Here we go. So you'll see on the Android app side, it's got the two word phrase cunning banana and on the Linux side, strong tomato. So that just helps you sort of figure out which one you're sending to. So let's send a file from the Linux side. You basically will just go, I see I've got a file selected there. I'm not too sure why. Let's just say selection actually go to the downloads directory. I had a file there already, in fact. 
there we go so let's just say this file the pdf i should just say that well we'll see in the settings just now if it is a media file a jpeg type or other image file it there is an option also to send it straight to your photos gallery which is quite nice so i'm going to attach this pdf but as i said it doesn't just do files i could also add a a text type as well here and now you could add a message in here say test message and you can also make it a multi-line if you want to and confirm so you'll see it's got two it's already detected here on the local network something called cunning banana samsung device with a number 228 that's actually the ip address the end of the ip address and on the android side i can just confirm that is the correct device so once you've selected your files here you just click there on the device you want to send it to just one other thing though to mention you can also here on the send mode choose multiple recipients so you could send a particular file or group of files to say six devices you've got maybe you know two android devices or five linux machines or a windows machine and five mac machines so that is actually where you would send it and there's a slight difference here because it the selection won't be cleared i'm assuming that means that you would go click to send first device click on second click on third click on fourth that's i'm assuming how that would work but in this case i've just got the one device so i'm going to click here on cunning banana and you'll see on the android side it's immediately shown here that strong tomato wants to send you two files and i can decline it or i can accept it i'm not sure what sure the options are oh it shows you here what the files are and i could also then select which ones or, or unselect you know what i don't want but also it shows me where the destination is where the files are going to be copied to so i'm going to say accept and done and i can just click on the linux side as well done so if i now was to go to out of there and go to solid explorer that i use and i go to downloads there you can see the text file and the energizer file there so i could actually just choose open with and say open that in the text editor and there you can see the message that i typed in and if i wanted to i could now oops select that copy it and paste it into something else you know but this could have been quite a long piece of text that i'd maybe uh, typed out already but just to show it can send text directly to the or fairly directly to the clipboard if you've mixed text with files or multiple files it uh, does transfer the text then as a text file to the destination device but have a look here if you say send and you now just say text and you say test text message again you could make this multi-line or longer and say confirm and i'm going to send it to cool banana you'll see now on the android size what what is received is there is the text message which you could just copy or whatever the case is but you'll see you've also got copy so if you click on copy it's going to copy it to the clipboard and then you could paste it straight into something else so it's not always uh, just a text file it can actually send to the clipboard so let's just go back to local send what i can show here now is just say from the android side let's just have a look at sending a file as well you see it again is confirming there that there is the strong tomato client the linux client and the 101 address is again the end of my ip address but you'll see now there's some other options at the top here you can also choose media for photos you can do files like we've done before and text but you can also send an app so if i was to choose an app it will present me here with a long list of my different apps and i could say choose aprs droid and then all i have to do again here is i would be clicking again on the destination but again we can also just have a look same options there you can do single and multiple recipients and i will just click on the destination and you'll see on the linux side it says yeah cunning banana wants to send you a file accept and i can say yes
and what's been received it's gone into my downloads folder and it's actually saved the APK file and if I look this is my downloads address and you'll see there is the APK file and it confirms there just now it's just been received so that's a backup of the install file from Android so I think let's just sort of finish off then really with just having a look at some of the settings. This is on the Android side. You can see you've got theme colors. You can choose language. I'm not sure what they've got. They've got quite a fair variety of languages. Uh, the quick save is just going to allow the save without that confirmation. But as I say, beware of anyone else on the local network. They can Anybody can just send you files automatically. So obviously you're not going to use that, say, on a work environment. Um, you've got some basic server set up. You can switch off the server. You can stop it. That would be just to recycle or refresh it. You could change the alias if you wanted to. You could also change. That's a default port number. Encryption is also on by default. You've got multicask. It's got some information about local send. And it's got the change log there. And I think that's about it on the Android side. Oh, it's just got, it just confirms again. If you click on the little information button on the top right there, it will just confirm what your IP address is and port number and so on. And this little timer thing will just show you a history of what's been transferred already. And on the Linux side, I think it's actually pretty well much the same. You've got similarly, you know, theme, uh, languages. You've got again got the quick save option. You can set your destination. Or you can just take the default downloads for Linux. Similar options there for the network side and the about and the change log. The only other addition that it's actually got is this troubleshooting guide. There's a little bit of information there, especially with things like firewalls and other things, gives you a bit of advice on how to go about sort of troubleshooting any issues. But I must say it's actually a pretty simple app. You know, again, in summary, it's really a question of you just need to start up both sides. So it's not going to be sitting and listening in the background. That's really for security purposes. It generates a SSL certificate on the fly to encrypt what's going across the LAN. And it really is a question of selecting what you want on the one side, seeing that the destination is actually started, its app is ready, clicking on it to send, and on the destination side, then just acknowledging OK or accept the files, or selecting if you want to choose from them. And that is it. Then you just go find them in your downloads, wherever you've set the destination to be. So it's not the whole sort of kitchen sink really it's not do it, trying to do everything it's trying to be simple and effective and secure and the way they've done it is for people that are concerned about sending files out across the internet or especially via third parties you know for this you don't need to transfer files through say using dropbox or g drive or push bullet or something like that you know you've got a fairly nice local app you can install this across everything that you're basically running in the house even this should even work for Raspberry Pis. If it's a Raspberry Pi, you might want to set that onto auto receive, for example, because you know you're not going to be logging in into the interface to accept. But otherwise, yeah, that's that sort of it. I just wanted to show it maybe in action. It's easier to show it than to just do a post about it sometimes. I'm sure some of you will find a use for this and hopefully you found it interesting. So yeah, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.